Welcome to 6.5 on the road here at HPE Discover, Las Vegas 2025. I'm Dave Nicholson. I'm here with my esteemed co-host, Keith Townsend. And Ryan, tell us who you are. Uh, Ryan King. I, uh, I manage our global ecosystem for infrastructure and AI at Red Hat. Good to have you. Good to have you here. Um, you mentioned AI just now. Yeah. <laughs> AI is all the buzz. Yeah. Talk, talk about talk about the ecosystem that includes Red Hat and HPE and, and your thoughts around AI these days. So um, a little of my personal story, if you don't mind. Yeah. So I've, oh, been, um, I've been at Red Hat for 15 years now. Uh, and so, and before that I was at Intel for 10 years. So I'm kind of a hardware person in the software world. Uh, and so in my roots, I knew kind of like what was happening in the hardware space and I saw what was happening with AI back in like the mid 20, like 2015, 2017 period. And when I saw deep learning come on the, on the scene, um, I was the person at Red Hat that said, we really should start working with NVIDIA because all this deep learning stuff is like really heavy matrix math and these models are getting very big. Um, and that's what's called deep learning at the time. And so I, I live in the Bay Area, so I took our corp dev people and we went down and we started working with NVIDIA very early. So like the work you see and kind of like GPU operator is something that we wrote with NVIDIA and turned over to them. So like all of this stuff to kind of lay down the foundation of like Kubernetes and AI was a personal like project of mine, a passion project at Red Hat, which has turned into a very close partnership with HPE and NVIDIA. So early on, they were accusing you of messing around with video game stuff. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it was like Back to the Future, where like Doc Brown's like Ronald Reagan, the actor, and like like you know Nvidia, the graphics company. And I'm like, yeah, like seriously, this is. And they had such a hook, and I'd seen what they'd done. Like, they're so innovative and so fast paced. I was like, they're going to do very well here. Like, they know how to turn on a dive. They know how to build layers of technology and make it available, and it's proven out. And so, and so the AI landscape, as far as Red Hat is concerned, now. Where are we? Well, I personally, so there's a couple things that have happened. And so I've, I've been saying to people like, this is the first time I've really as like a software architect type person. I know I'm a hardware person, but like I could see how you can fully implement like enterprise scale AI with the agentic turn, right? Like, Cause we went from models into generative and into, you know, now into agentic. Um, so with, we are creating a platform to build and run AI. And so on the build side, with Agenta capabilities like uh, an OpenShift AI around like um, MCP, you heard a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, we're adopting Llama stack as a standard. Now you're seeing these standard interfaces. And so now you have like those primitives that you can build Agentic applications on top of it, um, provide all the interfaces back into your enterprise world. Like MCP is a crazy standard, how fast that has taken root. I don't think I've ever seen anything go so quickly yeah. in terms of all the different services exposed. And that's building and then running we acquired a company, Neural Magic. Uh, have you heard of Neural Magic before? I have. So um, they are the upstream folks that maintain the LLM. Um, so you have the core contributors and the committers to that project. So that makes Red Hat now like the top contributor and committer to the VLM project. And so when you run AI, you have to have a runtime for us. You can think of like the Linux kernel is like running on CPUs. You can think of VLM is like running on GPUs. And so that community figured out like that, hey, you, you need the ability to like you don't want to page memory in and out all the time. Like efficiency in running models is super important. So they did all the work to say, here's how you can do that with like page memory attention and really cool techniques to make memory and models run faster. And so the communities come around that and that's what Red Hat's good at, right? Yeah. And so with uh, Neural Magic coming into Red Hat, it actually brings back Brian Stevens, who is Red Hat's former CTO, was Google's Google uh, Cloud CTO and now back at Red Hat as our AI CTO. So it was like this, we just know like where communities get formed and what the purpose of those communities are. And so VLM is really becoming the standard for inference, which is how you run AI production. So now like Red Hat's in the middle of, we were always had like inference in our product, but now we're in the middle of the conversation for like day zero model performance and new accelerators. And so we're helping make sure that like, there's so many models, right? And there's like, you know, choice and accelerators, whether it's like the variety of NVIDIA offers or like alternatives that people want to explore. Like we're now deep in those conversations as a company. We're back to our roots of like infrastructure. So you bring up a really interesting topic in VLM and Red Hat's unique role. A lot of times, especially when it comes to open source projects, we're relying enterprise architects, CTOs are relying on Red Hat's upstream innovation and contribution. So how 
are you looking at evaluate weighting something like a BLM and then releasing that to your uh, customer base that that wants the reliability of Reddit? So um, a ton of the community, um, and that's always ongoing. And that's uh, and the best thing about that is we try to bring in different people to be part of that community and the stewardship of those projects. And that's what makes them successful long term. And that brings all the innovation in from every angle. Um, we take that and we create, a, you know, a downstream from that that is like essentially a hardened version to the enterprise. And then we maintain that over a series of like, we have like a latest, which is one month. We have like a um, two, you know, stable version and then up to like 18 months for like our long-term support. And that's the enterprise support they expect from us. We provide that support inside of OpenShift AI. We provide a Rel AI. And now the new exciting thing was Red Hat AI inference server. And so that is a, just a container with the inference engine in it. And we support that on, you know, it could be on OpenShift, it could be on RHEL, but we actually support it on any distro. So we're now kind of like saying, hey, now you can have an inference engine you can run anywhere on any, any distro. So that's the commercial end of it, um, but, you know, it all starts in the community. So looking forward, what are the kinds of things that we should be looking out for from Red Hat's perspective? What, what are you going to be, what are you going to be rolling out in the AI space? And, and how does that work with partners like HPE? How, how do you how do you manage? That? So um, we do a lot of work with HP foundationally for all the you know infrastructure and the availability on our platform. The RHEL 10 launch, the you know OpenShift updates, the new Red Hat AI the server. Um, there's a lot behind the scenes and just engineering to harden everything and make it enterprise ready, right? So that all, that keeps going with with HP around AI. Um, you asked about like what's interesting and coming around it. So these are a lot of like new acronyms, always new words all the time. <laughs> like you know, my wife just goes like. What did you just say, right? Like, right? I'm like, anyway, so like LLMD is a new project we announced at Summit. And so what that is, is distributed inference. And so we're using the Kubernetes primitives to distribute inference across a number of nodes and GPUs. And so this is, the foundation for this is a technology called KV Cache, Key Value Cache for AIs. And it shows like, how can you, there's routers being built into it. So like NVIDIA is contributing to it with Nixle, which is like cross node communication. We have, you know, we have um, core supporters with like um, CoreWeave and Google and a number of others that are come in and say, not just how do you run inference on a single node, but now how do you distribute it? Because there's a lot of optimization that can be done across different nodes, different GPUs and different stages of how a model, um, you know, per prefill and all of those types of work that needs to be done to add inference. So it's, you think about it, like in the future, it'll be a clusters of servers running inference and it will know how to load the model, it'll know how to distribute it and distribute the load across model, across users in real time. And that's the- It's a new, it's a new FLA for you there, four letter acronym. Yeah. LLMD. Uh, there's an apostrophe in there, so you could say it's- Oh, there three, is? Three with a plus for a minus <laughs> case. Three plus one? Yeah. It's my job, and I still can't keep up with <laughs> all of this. And I think this leads into my next question. You know, you folks have a wonderful relationship with HPE just mentioned yeah. that HPE has a fabulous relationship with NVIDIA and it, NVIDIA is the gorilla in the room, especially for training, but even for infancy, they're starting to build some capabilities around there. How are you folks working with NVIDIA to help shape what's coming down in customers' environments to help them adopt this technology? Well, I, I mean, I just mentioned their contribution to LMD, and so like distributed inference is a capability. Um, we also, uh, at Computex, um, Jensen announced their uh, enterprise AI uh, reference architecture. And so the word enterprise there, that's really Red Hat, right? Like, <laughs> right. So, like, so like personal pride, I got to draw the slide that he put up there. So it's like, it, all I got was, this is Red Hat, but like, I, you know, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> but like the idea that like, how do we bring, you know, how do we actually deliver enterprise you know, agentic AI factories. Um, so that's one area of collaboration with them. If you dig into that further, you can look at like what, you know, they're doing with NIM, what we're doing with them there. That's a nice encapsulated way of delivering, you know, a model with a runtime for a particular use case. Um, we're, they're looking at how we're doing, you know, things with MCP and Llama Stack and saying like, hey, it's good to see now enterprise support for those foundational like platform capabilities too. So um, we have a very strong, better together, uh, you know, story with NVIDIA that represents at customers and, you know, in the upstream. So what about in the virtualization space? It's funny, it's, it's funny to refer to traditional hypervisors because Keith and I are like, are we that old? Yeah. <laughs> are we that old? But a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of things have happened in the last few years in the, in the kind of virtualization space. Um, you've got RHEL 10, you've got HPE with GreenLake. I mean, yeah. what, 
What are you, what are you doing together on, on that front, helping people kind of navigate what's potentially a big change for people? Yeah, I mean, um, we have a broad view, um, which has played well for us. Uh, we were doing GreenLake with them in the container space. Um, certain things happened in the market with traditional hypervisors that gave us a fresh look um, with a number of customers. And so over the past 18 months, we've seen another number of customers say, we're gonna use, we're gonna go Kubernetes like as our foundation mm -hmm. for, for And so um, with OpenShift virtualization, now they can use OpenShift to run containers and for and AI. And so that's the broad view. And I like to like, the analogy I like to use is like, if you're in a situation and you have like your, your car you like, and you have a problem with it, you're like, gotta get a new car. If it's in the moment, you just you go like for like, just get me another, you know, Honda Accord, whatever, right? Like, but if you're considering what your future is, you're gonna look at like, what do I actually need now? And I think when people do that, they've made some really strong considerations and have started to pivot towards OpenShift because they see that OpenShift can provide that single control plane. So their operations people, they're like, hey, I can do vert, I can pick up containers and AI, because AI is all Kubernetes, right? And they're like, maybe I'm expanding my skill set now. They also look at it, funny enough, and if you look at like, you know, um, oh, Capitan over there, you've been over to see that thing, you've seen the, the water ch chiller on the side of it, these things have heat. And so oh, yeah. they're like looking at the full rack of servers, and here's my vert property. They can actually reduce the power footprint for that to make room for what they want to do at AI. So from an infrastructure and an operational standpoint, we look very strategic in terms of what people are doing. And they couple that with like GreenLake. So HP brings in the pay as you go, which is a big demand signal for us together. And GreenLake has turned from this, you know, start of a business and kind of like a technology venture between the companies to a very repeatable and kind of the anchor for our growth between the two companies right now for like where we see customer growth uh, between Red Hat and HP. Yeah, I can relate to the uh, car analogy. I'm, I'm actually in the process of spending a ridiculous amount of money to update a 2013 car oh. with CarPlay. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> It's worth it, I think. You know, hardware, software, it's kind of yeah, all yeah. the same. So Ryan, my last question for you, kind of keying off what you just said with AI, uh, Kubernetes, and VM, and one platform. Yeah. It gets me thinking about the platform engineering team uh, and this ability to now, for that team to now serve up AI yeah. alongside the development experience around VMs and both containers. Yeah, and I think like, um, it's beautiful, right? Like in terms of its simplicity in some ways, right? <laughs> um, you're still gonna have those GPU boxes that are doing the AI right. portion of it, but you're also gonna say, hey, like now I'm gonna use MCP to call back to these other applications that are gonna serve up answers to those agents, right? Um, so you're trying to get more of like a comprehensive viewpoint of the whole thing. So it could be containerized application, it could be virtualized. Um, it could be, you know, agent calling, you know, rag somewhere like, but it all starts to look like one infrastructure and that's kind of the moment we're going through right now. Well, Ryan King from Red Hat, thanks for joining us. Thank you. A pleasure. And for myself, Dave Nicholson, and my colleague here, Keith Townsend, thanks for joining us here for this edition of 6.5 on the Road from HPE Discover Las Vegas 2025. Stay tuned for more action coming up.